Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much for coming. What a wonderful day this is, and a wonderful occasion for Bristol Community College. Uh, my name is Jack Sprague, I'm president of this great institution, and I thank you for joining us for this milestone event. Um, today, we officially light the largest solar ca parking canopy in the Northeast, the result of a public-private partnership. that leverages, it leverages private funds to create a 21st century solution uh, to the growing carbon emission problem in our state and in our country and in the world. I will tell you more about this in a few minutes, but something that illustrates the monumental accomplishment of this project are the many luminaries who are here on Friday afternoon in the summer uh, to recognize this great project. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge, and we'll hear more from him later, the presence of His Excellency Charlie Baker, the Governor of the Commonwealth, <laughs> Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Matthew Beaton, <laughs> Commissioner of the Department of Energy, Judith Judson, <laughs> Eric Freeman, the DOER Deputy Commissioner, State Representative and Speaker Pro Tem of the House, our own Patricia Haddad. Yeah. <laughs> State Representative Chris Markey is here. Thank you. State Representative Paul Schmidt. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We have uh, someone came in, Stephen Howitt came in. Yeah, Stephen, there he is. How are you, Stephen? Thank you very much. Very good. Senator Michael Rodericks is here. Senator Michael Rodericks. The, the mayor of the city of Fall River, uh, uh, C. Samuel Sutter, will be here shortly if he's not here at this moment. That we're coming from an event at the battleship. Uh, representative Senator, representing Senator Mark Pacheco is Kyle Murray, his office, and representing. Uh, Representative Carol Fiola's office is Peter Daly. We have members from the Fall River City Council coming. Uh, Mike Mioza is coming. Mike Mioza, Ray Mitchell, and Linda Pereira. Alan Sylvia, Representative Alan Sylvia. Yeah, that's that. There we go. Representative Bob Cazera is here from New Bedford. Okay, well, I thank you very much for giving up your time on this important day for uh, Bristol Community College. You all have been great supporters of Bristol Community College. And now it's my honor to introduce to you, uh, who will introduce some of the other trustees, as, among other things, and that is the chair of our Board of Trustees, uh, Joseph Marshall. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Thank you. It's good to see a lot of the uh, same faces I saw on the uh, battleship about an hour ago. So thanks for following us up here. Um, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, it's my pleasure to welcome you to a Bristol Community College where we say we change the world learner by learner. Um, none of this happens without the cooperation of a wonderful group of uh, trustees of which I'm honored to be a, a member of. Um, not all are here, but I'd like to name them anyway. Uh, Dr. Patricia Andrade, Mr. Jaziel Chase, uh, Attorney James Grady, Mrs. Uh, Deb Kenny is with us, uh, Mrs. Cynthia Rose, Mr. Tony Sapienza, Dr. Ronald Schwartz, Ms. Diane Sylvia, and Attorney Steve Torres, as well as Attorney Max Volterra. That, that makes up the Board of Trustees, and it's the most dedicated, thank you. It's the most dedicated group, uh, and I've worked with a lot of groups over the years, the most dedicated group that I've ever, I've ever really have worked with. In conjunction with that, it's my honor to mention the names of the uh, Bristol Community College Foundation Board, of which I was a member prior to being a, being a trustee. Uh, Susan LaVoy, Elliot Rosenfield, Don Smith, Donna Stewart, Betty Welch, my friend Dick Wolfson, and Patty Zukowski. 
Those are all members of the, uh, the Cummern Foundation. Also, it's my duty to also announce the, uh, the uh, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Reverend Lawrence is also a member of the foundation. Uh, the officers of the Alumni Association, Carol Michael and Leonard Martin. So thank you. Thank you for your participation and what you do for the college. I'm proud to be an alumnus of this great institution. I'm proud to own a small business in this region and proud of the work that Bristol Community College does with more than 25,000 people who attend the college, who use our facilities, and who take part in non-credit courses. As a small business owner, I see the benefit of BCC every day, as through our programs and services, we prepare citizens for good jobs, to transfer to great colleges, and to, in the general, in general move, to the, move their lives to improve our region. I'm very pleased to welcome our many guests from all over the state and the country today, and, I, sub and uh, I suspect that you don't know much about Bristol Community College, so you're going to have to indulge me for about two hour. minutes. Yeah. About two minutes. No, no, I'm very sensitive to that. Uh, yeah, for the next, uh, how many pages? No. Um, but just indulge me for a few seconds. Uh, more than 12,000, for those of you who don't know, more than 12,000 students attend Bristol Community College each year, making us the largest undergraduate institution in the region. Since 2008, we've, we've awarded the largest number of degrees and certificates in the community college system. Our programs prepare people for jobs that are needed here, from healthcare to engineering to business and information management. We are on the front line of making college affordable, keeping our fees low, and making do with limited resources. Uh, students come here, for, uh, uh, here first for an education that allows them to transfer, transfer to Brown, UMass, and Northeastern, and that was just this year. We are proud to be a leader in making college possible for the people of Southeastern Massachusetts because they deserve the best. And we are proud to be the, in the forefront of projects such as this that demonstrates our, our uh, scrappy, can-do spirit. So once again, uh, I'd like to welcome you. We're glad to have you here celebrating this groundbreaking project that, like so many others at Bristol Community College, uh, put us ahead of the class. I thank you very much for your time. Class of 78, Joseph Marshall. Well, this is an historic event uh, for Bristol Community College. Uh, our solar canopy covers five acres. Does it look like five acres to you? Uh, uh, 3.2 megawatt renewable energy, an array of, uh, of renewable energy. And it will provide more than 50% of the energy for this campus. Uh, we're very proud of that. Also, it avoids the, the uh, emission of 1,500 tons of carbon dioxide annually. Uh, that's equivalent of about 500 cars uh, in the atmosphere uh, releasing these carbon dioxide. It's locked in at a, a very attractive purchase price for 20 years. Uh, so we're very uh, pleased it's below market now and it will remain below market at this price for the next 20 years and you can imagine what prices will be 20 years from now. Uh, purchasing power from uh, Sun Edison will save the college uh, $1.7 million uh, under the terms of this contract, the 20, the 20 years of the contract. Uh, so it was a $7.7 million construction loan to build and install the canopy. No, Governor will be pleased to hear, no public funds were used for this. Uh, Energy uh, Purchasing Consortium uh, between Power Options and uh, Sun Edison. Uh, we have, and we'll hear later from them, uh, Cynthia Arcate from uh, Power Options and Matt Kearns from Sun Edison. This is the largest solar parking canopy in New, in New England. I think I said that, but uh, I can't bear as repeating. Now, as a serendipity to this project, just think of the savings that we're going to have uh, from this canopy uh, 
during the snow plowing and snow removal uh, season. So Governor, I commend this to your attention. Just think of the possibilities for MBTA. What about just the Commonwealth of The canopy constitutes a major component of our BCC commitment to sustainability, conservation, and environmental protection. For example, if you look across the street as you drove in, uh, we have the construction of a new health and science building, thanks to the bond bill. And uh, uh, it's a LEED Platinum certified, zero net energy, and I don't know if you noticed the no pepper sign as you, as you drove by, but I made sure that was on the wall uh, for you baseball fans. It already has attracted, uh, the building has already attracted widespread attention. We have a leading by example award from DOER. Uh, we have uh, also a national award from the KUBO, the National Association of College and University Business Officers, a national award for innovation. The League for Innovation in the Community College, another national award for innovation of this building. And we were a finalist for the prestigious National Bellwether Award. All this without the building even being built yet, so imagine when it's going. Uh, I am a founding signatory of the uh, American College and University President Climate Commitment uh, pledge that we made to be zero, zero uh, net and to replace our carbon across the country. So it was my honor to serve as a founding signatory. <clears throat> we also created here at BCC an Institute for Sustainability and Post-Carbon Education. And that has been very much a watchdog for the whole college in making sure that we adhere to our principles. In addition to this uh, noteworthy sustainability project, BCC has made uh, other uh, advances as well. There are other solar installations across the campus on the roofs of some of the buildings. Exterior and interior lighting efficiencies are in place already. HVAC improvements, variable frequency drives are in place. New gas and electric contracts. So we're uh, really moving forward and I, I wanted to just take a second and only a second to uh, demonstrate how this, uh, how, uh, to emphasize how this demonstrates the role of higher education in this very important matter of sustainability. And the first is that we advocate, we in the higher education community, advocate outside of the campus uh, to the community the importance of sustainability, the importance of climate, commit, uh, co the commitment to the climate control and uh, energy, re renewable energy. So it's one thing to espouse those reasons out into the community, but it's another, the second idea, and the second point of importance is that we demonstrate our commitment by what we do inside the campus as well, inside the college. Not only are we uh, bragging about uh, what the community and emphasizing what the community should be doing, but we're also talking uh, the talk, if you will, and walking the walk by making sure that we demonstrate our commitment to the things that we're telling the community to do. And that's the importance of, the impo of the, some of the things that I mentioned uh, to you uh, just a minute ago. Now, it's my honor and privilege to introduce uh, uh, our uh, governor, Charlie Baker. He is the 72nd governor of the Commonwealth, elected in November and sworn in on 8 January, uh, a date he says was uh, more noted by the Boston Olympics headlines than his, uh, than his inauguration. But uh, he brings expensive experience, as you all know, to uh, an expertise to his gubernatorial uh, responsibilities. He's been a cabinet officer in two administrations, CEO of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Uh, sustainability represents a major priority for Governor Baker, and uh, particularly solar, solar power. Just this week, uh, the governor uh, offered legislation designed, one, to further strengthen the solar power industry, and second, to accelerate its growth by providing incentives to support the transition to self-sustainability status as well as fair pricing, fair and equitable pricing. Of course, the legislative details must be worked out, and that always happens in the political arena. But for me, uh, I want to emphasize the importance here is not this particular piece of legislation, but it's his commitment to the, to the theme of, uh, of uh, sustainability. And um, in calling attention, here we have the governor 
calling attention to the clean energy, the need for clean energy and sustainability across the Commonwealth and the bully pulpit that he has and moves about. So the particulars of a piece of legislation aren't necessarily as important in my mind as the importance of his bully pulpit and his spirit of uh, commitment uh, to clean energy. The goal is set to achieve 1,600 megawatts by the year 2020. May I present to you a champion of renewable energy and sustainability, Governor, Governor Charlie Baker. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. And Jack, I, I look forward to discussing with my colleagues in the legislature the notion that it's simply the thought that counts and they should just <laughs> skip the details and move on by with respect to the legislation that we filed. Um, let me just first of all congratulate Bristol and the leadership in the community for uh, for this initiative, I was literally, I wasn't kidding when I said maybe we could just put uh, a canopy over the Commonwealth um, between the months of maybe January and March. Uh, and in fact, last year we would have only needed the canopy for 30 days because it snowed for 25 of them. We got nine feet of snow and got it all over with in 30 days. Um, this is a very special day for Bristol and it's a very special day for Massachusetts. Jack went over some of the numbers with respect to the benefit associated with this. Um, I would simply say that this is a, a marvelous way to provide green energy, clean energy here on campus, and at the same time do it in a way that is unique and creative, and in many ways a, a trendsetter for others who are coming, looking for and trying to pursue different approaches uh, to continuing to reduce our carbon footprint and to provide alternatives to more traditional sources of fuel. And I appreciate the fact that you mentioned our legislation, Jack. Uh, we look forward. Uh, I know Secretary Beaton has spent uh, a great deal of time talking to Representative Haddad, to um, Senator Pacheco, and to other members of the House and Senate about this legislation. And we look forward to a, hopefully a quick and robust debate in the fall so that we have a chance to sign uh, legislation before the end of the year. Let me just say two other things. One is, uh, I was looking at Joe's lapel, and, and Joe's lapel points out that he's a Vietnam veteran. Many of us were over at the uh, Battleship Co. 50th anniversary uh, uh, celebration today. And one of the things we did was we gave all those who served on the Massachusetts a chance to stand up and be recognized for their service to the country during World War II. And I think in some ways, for me anyway, and I think for everybody who was there, that was a very special moment. And, and, uh, and Joe, I would just like to give those members uh, who served uh, this country um, and wore the uniform a chance to stand and be recognized here today as well. So I want you to stand and anybody, anybody else. Shouldn't we just be Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and the 4th of July, folks? We should never miss an opportunity to, to thank those who, and their families, who made that commitment uh, to serve this country. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to be here both to commend the folks at Bristol for their leadership uh, and their commitment to a more creative alternative approach to not just energy generally, but renewable, sustainable, clean energy in particular. And I look forward to working with all of the folks in the legislature and all the folks here in the Commonwealth to continue to pursue unique and different alternatives, to continue to reduce our carbon foot footprint and remain a national leader in the green, 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 green clean future that we're all looking forward to. Yeah, sort of like the comment about my expensive uh, experience. I thought about that for a minute, my expensive experience, yep, I got rings under my eyes and gray hair and all sorts of other prices I've paid along the way with my experience. But thank you very much for the chance to be here and congratulations to you all. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> well, the Power Options is the largest energy producing consortium in Massachusetts 
It serves more than 500 nonprofit and governmental entities. Uh, and by the way, any nonprofit or governmental agent can uh, join the consortium. And uh, they played a, a power option, played an important role in this project. And permit me now to call on the president and CEO of Power Options, Cynthia Arcade. Thank, Thank you very much, President Spraga, Governor, members of the legislature, all of you here. This is indeed a very exciting event for us. This project's been a long time coming. When we first announced our solar program three and a half years ago, Bristol was one of the first members to step forward and embrace the opportunity. So it gives you some idea of how long we've been at this. Um, President Sprague, I want to congratulate your team, particularly Leo Racine and Steve Kenyon, who have been very tenacious. They've got great business savvy. Um, and I hope that someday they will say this was fun. Um, <laughs> But they've been great to work with and a real pleasure. So. I also want to thank our solar partner, Sun Edison, who has been working with us uh, since 2011 on, on building things like this. Um, it, this is very exciting. We now have 70 megawatts under contract in the Power Options program. Most of that is with 22 housing authorities who represent 18,000 residential uh, units. And we estimate that they will save somewhere around $70 million over the 20-year term of these contracts. So it's not just uh, rich people that can benefit from solar, and it's, we're very proud of that. And Governor, I want to thank you for your legislation. Um, it shows a, a real positive signal to the industry that you are committed to keeping this a robust, competitive market and a, a successful endeavor for the state. And we're committed to working with you and getting that legislation passed. Uh, we are very mindful of the cost of this because we do worry about the rest of our members who don't take advantage of solar and how much it costs. And uh, we're very hard at work trying to figure out what the right balance is between uh, what customers pay for and um, how much of this stuff we built. But um, again, I want to thank you for your leadership and we greatly appreciate that. So again, thank you very much and congratulations, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, President Arcade. Sun Edison is the largest renewable energy company in the world. It has a global influence on this important topic. Please welcome Matt Kearns, who is the General Manager uh, for the United States and Canada at Sun Edison. Matt? Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Um, well, that's, it's a big company, kind of big sounding title, but uh, I'm a developer at heart, so I know how hard it is to get these things done, and they don't get done without political leadership, without a revenue contract and a good partner from the college, uh, and without a developer who's willing to take the chance, and without uh, a, a good guide in Cindy Arcady. So thank you so much uh, for for those key elements. Um, I'd really like to highlight the uh, political leadership piece and sort of echo some of the other uh, pieces that folks mentioned. Um, the fact that the governor of the Commonwealth is here today sends such a clear signal to the marketplace. The market's not asking for training wheels and prop ups and assistance. As, as somebody said, um, you know, they, we did not use public funds to do this project. This is a private investment that makes a reasonable rate of return, but you can't do it if you don't have clear policy signals. So thank you, Governor, uh, for your leadership, and thank you to the members of the legislature for taking uh, this recent action, which provides clarity and certainty so that we can continue to do the good work that helps us benefit uh, partners like Bristol Community College. We're so thankful for great partners like you. It is an exercise in entrepreneurship at every level. Everyone has to lean in. And so today is a home run. It's a beautiful day. We're here to celebrate and we got the governor. So <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, so it's a 3.2 megawatt uh, project. It's a parking canopy. I have uh, lusted after parking lots across the Commonwealth. I hope to continue to do so. Um, and, and do many more of these projects. The city of Fall River, I can't uh, thank you enough for your welcome reception. 
the, com the host community is really the, the secret sauce in the whole thing, I think. It's kind of the bedrock of a good project. Um, finally, I'd just like to thank our team at Sun Edison. Uh, it's a great team. It's, a, it, it's kind of a young entrepreneurial team also. And we run into lots of, of other businesses in the Commonwealth. We work with them. Uh, Solar Design Associates is here. A number of others. Um, Cindy, we just have this great sleeve and network of Commonwealth businesses that we work with. And we're so proud uh, to be a part of it. Again, I'd just like to thank Governor Baker, uh, the leadership on the policy front. Um, the capital will flow if we have the right signal and we are poised to do more. We've done about 100 megawatts in the Commonwealth. We'd love to do more. We like spending money in the state. It's a great place to do it uh, because we're, we're such a warm reception and we're able to uh, participate in ribbon cuttings like this. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Matt mentioned the city of Fall River and uh, uh, although I mentioned their names a little earlier, uh, they have made it up from the battleship and I want to acknowledge uh, City Councilor Ray Mitchell is here. City Councilor Ray Mitchell. <laughs> Linda Pereira, I always mention your name. And I want to especially acknowledge the presence of our Mayor, C. Samuel Sutter. Thank you very much. And we have the voice of business with us, Rob Mellion, the president of the, uh, of the Chamber of Commerce in Fall River. Rob, thank you. This is all music to your ears, Rob, right, with uh, renewable energy. Well, now we're at the moment that we've been waiting for. Uh, if I could ask Governor Baker to join me at the podium to help me throw the ceremonial switch for the lighting of this solar array. So can I, can I just tell a quick story? Please. I went to a, uh, we, we shouldn't call them retirement parties, we'll call it a transition party for a friend of mine uh, who was leaving uh, Bright Horizons after having been there for many, many years. And um, there was a, a big light show at the end of the evening uh, as they went to a video and celebrated her, her time with the organization. And, uh, and there was a, a ton of, energy and music and all the rest and then at the very end of the light show there was literally a whole set of bang 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 big loud bangs which were um sort of punctuated the whole thing and uh my security detail literally went into total overdrive so jack just said geez i hope the security guys didn't get too bent about that i think i think that one was okay Thank you. We must get used to it following him around, right? <laughs> well, this concludes our proceedings. Uh, our BCC student ambassadors have a gift for you as a memento of this important occasion. It's a solar-powered flashlight. Now think of that, solar-powered but in the dark, right? You're gonna need it for a flashlight. So please, please enjoy that and keep BCC in your, in your minds. Uh, as I say, this concludes our proceedings. Uh, please join us for a reception sponsored by Power Options in the Jackson Arts Center, uh, just across the way here. Uh, and thank you for coming and participating in this wonderful BCC celebration. Thank you. Thank you.